So this is, does your personality type clash with success? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. End of webinar. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Conventional wisdom teaches that some personality types are more likely than others to create a successful business. Now, as I, as you probably know, I don't give a monkey's uncle about conventional wisdom at all. Never paid any attention to it. <laughs> I'm not going to start now. So I'm going to show you how you can play the game to win regardless. You can create your own successful business regardless of your personality type because it's what happens up here that matters. And what I'm going to do today is I've restricted myself, otherwise we'd be here for three weeks. I'm going to demonstrate this by showcasing two different personality profiling methods that I use myself. Now, let's be really clear here. I am not teaching these two methods here today. That would be impossible. What I am doing is I chose this word really carefully. I'm showcasing these two methods. Now, one of them I teach myself, so I'll be giving you links for, so that you can discover more, obviously. I'm a businesswoman. <laughs> the other one I don't teach, but I, um, I use uh, and, and I, introduce, um, I include an introduction to this method in my fabulous color psychology course, but I do not teach it. I, I've learned what I use about this method over the years, probably before, because I've been around a long time, probably before they came up with a formal, what do you call it, a, a training course, certainly in, in the UK. Um, but I've been talking to Neil this morning and he says, get yourself booked on the, the full training. So I'm going to look at that straight after we've finished, which is awfully goody poos. Uh, so I'll be providing links for you to go away and find out more if you're interested. All right. So I'm not teaching this stuff. You'll pick up hints and tips, of course. But what I'm doing is showcasing because I want you to realize that the, the stuff I, I use in that I teach you in my training is not everything that's available to you. There's loads of profiling. Um, methods. And in Fabulous Colour Psychology, I actually go into them. I'll talk more about that later. Let's talk about this word. <laughs> this was Neil's word. I think this is brilliant. I ummed and ahed and came up with nicey picey titles. And he said, no, no. This is about, does your personality type clash with success? I thought that was a great word. Do you know what clash means? You know me, I like the English language. I went and looked it up. It means to meet with and come into violent conflict. And I think that explains exactly why we need to talk about this. Because you see, again, conventional wisdom says some personality types when you've done one of these personality profiling questionnaires, and they're all over the place, aren't they? <clears throat> some of them are high level, some of them are decidedly just for fun. But the thing is, you, you do this, this questionnaire and then you think, oh, that's me. That's me for life. Therefore, what Kim's talking about today means I can't ever be successful. What a load of absolute hogwash. The purpose of this today is to, is to talk about personality profiling and the benefits of it for you, for how you can use it to create success in your own business, but also how you can use this with your clients. <sighs> I 
I get really excited because this is stonking stuff. I hope this is uh, what you've come to hear. Let's see who else has joined us in the last few minutes. Um, Am I pronouncing this correctly? Priyanka. What an interesting name. Lovely name. And Suzanne. If I've oh and Heidi. If I've missed anybody, slap me severely. Lovely that you've joined us. Thank you. You see, the, the conventional wisdom, and I keep doing this. <laughs> this is my personality type, all right? <laughs> we don't do conventional wisdom. <laughs> at all the, the conventional wisdom says some personality types we are more inclined to create a successful business but will not be able to maintain or develop that business some types will have absolutely brilliant ideas but never get them off the ground some types will have great ideas but not have the inclination to do anything to achieve that. So as um, Dirty Harry says, we, we sat and watched uh, three of the Dirty Harry movies recently. Neil is a huge fan of Clint Eastwood. I like him as well, but um, this is from the film Magnum Force. And he says, <laughs> I can't do his accent, he, that laconic, American, Californian accent. I'm not even going to try. But he says, a man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> it's actually the closing line because he, he repeats it when he blows up his, his uh, nasty little boss. You have to understand your limitations. Now, <laughs> I also want to get over this concept of anyone having limitations let's put this in the positive what you have to understand is what your gifts and talents are so that those gifts and talents those innate gifts and talents that you brought with you into this human journey they can circum what's the word i'm going to say circumnavigate circumvent, sorry, some of these so-called limitations. So I'm going to say to you right now, and I would like you to write this down, because this is the important bit. You have everything you need right now to be a success at almost anything you put your mind to. You have everything you need but let's be real so here i am 64 years old out of condition flabby in places i'd rather not talk about walking to the car is about as much exercise as i'm prepared to take although we have taken up a bit of walking but not in this weather so the chances of me winning the 100 meters at the next olympics is shall we say, not something I should bother putting any, any, any energy into. Because seriously, that's unrealistic. Right? You have to be real about this. It's not, let, let's make sure that we, we apply perspective. And that's from a movie, isn't it? That's from Ratatouille. That's brilliant. The, uh, the food critic. Absolutely super. A little bit of perspective. Now, understanding what you are, well, who you are and what you're capable of, and also understanding what you're not capable of, could be the missing link in your quest for success in life and business. To me, the two are, you can't separate them. Although I'm talking here about business, I'm talking about your life as well. So I want to address um, a book, which to me has caused so much pain. There's a lot of good stuff in it. There's also a lot of twaddle that people have 
that they just use because they've read it. And this is The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap. You'll find it on Amazon. In the self-development arena, the world and his mother quote this like the Bible or the Quran or whatever. Whenever limits or limitations are mentioned, somebody says, oh, you've got an upper limiting problem. Do you know, I seriously think if someone, if the next person who suggests to another in a Facebook group that they've got a UPL, I may slap someone and end up in jail because they're just, apply, they're just applying generalizations to people they've probably never even met. How dare they say you've got an upper limiting problem? I haven't a clue. One review on Amazon summed this up quite beautifully. This person, don't know them from Adam, said the main premise of the book is that we are all currently suffering with upper limit problems. In that, however well our lives seem to be going, we will always find some conflict to sabotage how good things are, be that in work, relationships, health. She's absolutely right. We do not always have to find some conflict to sabotage how good things are at all. And this is where the clash with success comes in. If you're clashing, if you're conflicting, if you're feeling really conflicted about being successful, you're probably buying into this, oh, well, I've got a problem. No, you haven't. There's nothing wrong with you. And there never was. <sighs> We're all simply different from each other. There are no rules, there are no limits, no problems that could possibly apply to every single one of us. So let's stop talking generalizations and let's get down to the nitty gritties of who you are. Because you're not me, and I'm sure you'll be thanking God on your knees or thanking whoever on your knees. You're not your mother. You're not whoever it is that people in the family say, oh, you just like so. Tell them to shut up. <laughs> you are you. You are unique. You are different from anybody else. And the sooner you start getting that up here and believing it, the closer to success at whatever you want, you will become. So what I'm talking about here is the difference, the difference between you and whoever. They're just differences. They're not limitations. If you see them as limitations, we're going to talk about how you can turn those around. So let me introduce to you the two personality profiling methods that I use, well, that I've chosen to focus on for this particular webinar. The first one is the color psychology um, questionnaire that I use in all my training. And this has four personality types, red, blue, green, and yellow. I'm going to give you an overview in the moment, in a moment, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, like I say, I'm not teaching you this. You can go and learn this for yourself and you can go and do the quiz for yourself. That's where I recommend you start. So, uh, and the second one is MBTI. This is the Myers-Briggs type indicator. I don't teach that. I use it virtually every day. I was taught this, I can't, I was trying to tell Neil last night, I can't remember when, but a fabulous manager at work ran a little course for us in our team and said, and, and explained to me what, 
what my profile is and why I behave the way I do and why everybody thinks that I'm not that profile because I'm a brilliant actress. All right. So can you see there is room for maneuver? So let's focus first on the color psychology quiz that I use in all my training. So I've got, um, I use this in color analysis in a box. The quiz is there for you to do. This was designed by a qualified color psycho, uh, no, a qualified psychologist. She created this quiz. I worked with her hundreds of years ago. She allowed me to use this quiz. I've tweaked it slightly for our industry. I would not use the same quiz all the time with men before you ask. I would tweak that even more, but I'm not talking about that today. This is just about dealing with your, hopefully your, your female clients to start with because you can practice on them. You can't practice on men. So the color analysis in the box training contains the quiz, the questionnaire, and it also shows you how to use that quiz with your clients. If you've already got color analysis training in a box and you want to know, you want to go deeper into color psychology, then you can upgrade to a course, um, a fabulous course called Color Confidence Expert. That is not available to buy on its own because you have to have done color analysis training in a box first. If you've got color analysis training in a box, go into your online training account and you'll find details of how to upgrade. If you can't find them, email me. There are five modules in that course. We devote two of them to color personality. The first one is how to go deeper into color psychology combinations, which I'll be talking about in a while. And also how a client's personality type relates to their physical, seasonal, or tonal coloring. If you've already done color analysis training and you want to go online with, and you don't have to have done my color analysis training, but I offer a training course now called Color Your Client Online. And in there, you'll help your client discover her color personality type, and who she really is and how to dress to ex express that or perhaps as we're going to discover today how she would rather be perceived the fabulous color psychology course itself you learn to identify um, how to um, well you learn step by step how to create a color personality profile of your client and create a bespoke color analysis service for your clients. And in there, we discuss lots of other ways of personality profiling. So I made a list here. That we start with the four humors. We talk about Carl Jung. We talk about the Myers-Briggs type indicator. The, the moniker for that, the acronym is MBTI. We talk about extroversion versus introversion, which we will talk about today. The Kearsey temperament sorter, which is one of my favorites. True colors, VAC learning styles, co color effects and color me a season, neuro, I can't say it, NLP, <laughs> neuro linguistic programming, enneagrams, archetypes. There are so many different ways for you to profile your client. I have tried all of those. There are some I don't use. There are some I pick little bits out. Uh, Enneagrams, for instance, there are nine different types. To me, it's too many. It, it just doesn't work for me. I always forget, whereas color psychology, there's, uh, there's four. It works easily. Now we're going to, today we're going to talk about um, MBTI, which has 16 types, but that doesn't phase me because it's, it's, they're all combinations. So that's where you can find out more. 
I've just chosen these two because I know the color personality quiz, the color psychology quiz, as I call it, is the stuff that is the foundation for all the color work I do. I cannot work with a client. I cannot mentor a client because I don't just work with image consultants. I work with other business owners as well. The first thing I do is profile them. I have to, I have to understand who am I working with? And part of that is I have, I, I'd be lying if I said I've profiled myself. I haven't been that. <laughs> that pompous. <laughs> but you can't profile yourself, let's be real. I have had other experts help me to determine my personality profile and to explain why I do what I do so that I think you need to work with somebody who can be objective about you because we can all be very insular. But I know my personality type inside out. I know who I want to work with and absolutely who I don't. And that is part of why I am successful, very successful, because I don't work with people who irritate me. <laughs> I don't work with people who cause me problems. I don't work with people who do not fit my ideal client avatar. I've learned that if I have this ridiculous notion of working with everybody, I am going to be less than successful. This personality profiling of me helped me understand what type of business I want, what level of business I want, who I want to work with, and what I will not touch with a barge pole. And since I took that stance since I got that up here and started working with it. Our business has gone like this, just and it keeps going up and up and up. It is amazing. So I want you to understand that you have the power, you, you have the power to take your personality traits and leverage them to circumvent any potential limitations that you might think you have, you have the power to turn those into success. Okay, so any questions at this point? Are we all getting this? Let's see who else has joined us, if anybody. Iris, you've joined us. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Anna as well. Lovely to have you with us. Okay, right, so let's get into um, the color psychology quiz that I include in all that training I've just been talking about. There are four personality types. So what I'm going to do is just give you an indicator as to the four types. So the yellow personality type is the um, these are the motivators, risk takers, optimists, and they love life. They're probably um, uh, externally motivated as well, which means probably extrovert. The other extroverts are the greens, but they're a bit more intense. They are, they commit themselves passionately. They're self-motivators, they're dependable. They encourage, they're very mature, they're good negotiators. The two introvert um, types are the blues and the reds. The blues are very reserved, they're very graceful, they are true lovers of people, very highly intelligent, and the reds are the dramatic, sophisticated, um, and they, you, you don't mess with reds because they demonstrate crystal clarity and power. 
Now, in a work environment, what I would say to you is the way these four personality types work is in an office, for instance, in a community group, in a business, in any group where you wish to be successful, you need all four personality types because then you've got balance. So if you think, oh, well, I'm absolutely a yellow type, uh, I'm, I'm a risk taker and I love life and I'm, I'm, I'm the, the socialite, how can I be successful? You can. That's a limitation that's up there. There's nothing wrong with you. There never was. There are loads of yellow personality types who are incredibly successful, but they have adopted some of the other personality traits into their daily business life. So that's just one example. So let me talk about our business, for instance. In our business, I am a red. In the color psychology quiz, there are 11 questions. I still, after 96,000 years, will answer nine of those as a red still. I am really, really red. I do not have a second modality. I'm just red. <laughs> so I'm a bossy diva. I'm a perfectionist. I, I don't suffer fools at all. This is why I had to get really clear on who I will work with and won't work with. People who mess me about, I'm very happy to get rid of them. And that goes for um, friends. I have cold friends along the way. I've got rid of family members out of my life. I've certainly got rid of um, clients out of my life, mess me about, and no. So I'm a red. Now, Neil is a blue. He is horizontal. He is calm and he is detailed and he is understated and he is the exact opposite of me. Now, if you've only got red and blue, Generally, reds and blues go like this. They just cannot work together. So if you've got, if you're a red and you've got a blue in your family and you're having real problems communicating, or you're a red and you've got a blue client, or you're a blue and you've got a red client, that probably won't happen. You'll find huge problems communicating. Because Reds are big picture people, blues are detail oriented. And I usually explain this by referring to the Beatles. I think everybody knows the Beatles. By the way, this also relates to all the big bands that have been there forever and a day and are still churning out their music 50 years later, like the Stones, um, White Snake. Zeppelin, you can see the kind of music we like. We're blues, well, I am blues rock. These people, these bands, all have the four personality types in situ. That's why they stay together, because they, can t they might fall out now and again, but they realize they have the makings, the, the four foundation pillars of a successful business. Now, that's what Neil and I have, because I have learned yellow traits. Neil is blue with almost equal green traits. So I'll explain this using the, the Beatles as an analogy. Uh, John Lennon, front of stage, bossy diva does all the interviews, is outrageous, winds up the British establishment, and he's in the band 
for the fame, the glory, the money, whatever. George Harrison is the blue, was the blue, and John Lennon was the red, sorry. <clears throat> George Harrison was the blue. He's the detail. He's the, um, I'm in this for the music, and when the tour is over, goes home to his family. When Lennon and McCartney were writing, writing songs in the early days, and then they presented the written song in its draft format to um, George Harrison and Ringo Starr, John would sit at the piano and say, right, we've got this. This is the first bit that we're, you know, this is the, the, the verse. Then we're going to go into a chorus. And George, I want you to come in here and play a few bars. And George would say, yes, but do you want eight bars? Do you want 16 bars? Do you want me to come in on the half beat? On the, where do you want me to come in? Where do you want me to finish? Blues need detail. Reds have no concept of detail. What are you on about? Just, just, just do it. That's why reds and blues go like this. What they need is a green between them. This is Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney could see the big picture and relate that to the detail person, the blue. There's the big picture. This is what John wants, George. I'll work with you on getting this bit right. That's the green is the negotiator, the, the, the balance, if you like. Funny, isn't it, how green is the color of balance in nature? as well and the yellow Ringo Starr is the one who just whatever do what you want you know I'll drum here I'll drum there if you want me to change it it's fine but what he is the yellow is the social motivator when things are going wrong the yellow will say don't worry I've got a little black book here full of names of promoters places we could play don't worry Everything's going to be absolutely fine. So when you have those four personality types in your business, in your life, success follows. So when I started doing this work and realized that Neil was blue green, this is why he can take my mad ideas and translate them into websites, courses, whatever. He just says to me, you come up with the idea. I'll find the solution. That's what a blue-green can do. I realized that we were missing the yellow traits. And even though, even though sometimes it nearly kills me, I have learned to adopt those yellow traits of being sociable because I'm not not innately sociable. I haven't time for small talk. I don't want to talk about the, the minutiae. I want to get into the big picture and how I can help you. This is why I'm not a coach. I'm a mentor. It's big picture. But I realized that if, if we could somehow bring in those yellow personality traits, the socialist, so, the socialist the, the approachable, the friendly, the, and I have to work at it. So I'm being sociable and friendly and approachable right now. And afterwards, I will have to go and lie down in a darkened room. I know there's a payoff. So do you see what I'm trying to say here? We have learned by looking at other social groups, communities, businesses, these rock, it came to me because that's how rock bands work. And the successful ones stay together because they've got all four personality types. If you've got two reds in a band, there's going to be conflict. There were two reds in the Rolling Stones in the early days with Brian Jones and Mick Jagger. It was Brian Jones's band. He called all the shots. When he unfortunately died, Jagger took over and the band changed um, direction. But those two 
that only one can be in charge. So if you've got two reds, you've got, you've got to sort it out. If I see another red in the room, I just nod <laughs> and they nod back. <laughs> There's something about understanding at a high vibrational level the type of person you're working with. I urge you to look at your business and see what traits you have, which of the four personality traits you have, and which ones are perhaps not as evident, and how you can bring that into your business. And it might be that you don't have to bring this physically into your business, but that you have to have that in the background. You have to have that in your lifestyle. So it could be that you identify the personality traits of your family and friends, those people who hopefully support you. Because if they're supporting you with those traits, that gives you the freedom to be who you are. Okay, just let me have a drink of water. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate that a little bit more later. I just want to get on to the second method that you might be interested in. As I said, you could go and look at um, Enneagrams, style personality, archetypes. I do use archetypes, but I'm not talking about that today. Uh, I definitely use Kearsey, but I'm not talking about that today. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be here forever. I've chosen to focus on something I thought you might know about. Very often, people can quote their MBTI um, code. So if you don't know anything about Myers-Briggs, just settle back and I'll give you a quick introduction. This isn't teaching you. Of course, it's just an, I'm just showcasing. So MBTI has 16 personality types, but like the color psychology, I, I, I am a total red, but I use red yellow traits. So it's combinations. Neil uses blue green combinations. Now, as I'll explain later, uh, I'm going to use somebody um, to explain who's a yellow red, which is completely different from me, and also someone who is a green yellow. So there are combinations of these personality types, and you can find out loads more about that in both Color Your Client Online and Color Confidence Expert. That's where I've gone deeper into those, right? Not going into that now. <laughs> Love to, but uh, another time perhaps. So MBTI works in the same way. There are four choices of whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, whether you're a sensor or you use intuition, whether you use thinking or feeling, and whether you use judging or perceiving. I'll, I'll explain a little more in a moment. And each of those, we just use the initial letter to start putting the combinations together to give you a code. So where is your energy naturally directed? Let's find out whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. Extroverts tend to be, um, they, they, their, their energy is directed outward. That's extra, it's outward, toward people and things outside of themselves. Introverts, their energy is directed inward toward their own thoughts, perceptions, and reactions. Okay? So if you're an extrovert, you have a code of E. If you're an introvert, you have a code of I. It's just the initial letter. E for extrovert, I for introvert. Okay? So extroverts tend to be more expressive, more social, more 
um, approachable perhaps. This, this is uh, the yellow extrovert. I am not an extrovert. I am a red introvert. I don't do extrovert naturally. I have to pretend. But also remember, we live in an extrovert world. The proportion of introverts is low compared with extroverts. So if introverts wish to be successful in business, then you might have to pretend to be an extrovert in certain circumstances. Just saying, it's what I've done. Okay, number two. What kind of information do you naturally notice and remember? So if you're a sensor, you will notice facts, details, and reality. If you're intuitive, you're more interested in how relationships between facts work. So you're interested in the meaning of those facts and details or the possibilities. So if you're a sensor, your code is S. If you're um, an intuitive, your code is N because we've already got I for an introvert. <coughs> so sensors, um, you trust past experience, so you learn from your mistakes and you often have good common sense. If you're an intuitive, you'll be imaginative and you pride yourself on creativity. So are you a sensor or an intuitive? Are you S or N? Number three, how do you decide or come to conclusions? I love this one. <laughs> ah, this completely blows my mind. This, this is the, the, the I'll explain in a moment how I use this. So you're either a thinker or a feeler. Thinkers make decisions based on objective and impersonal and logical criteria. So you tend to use your left brain, left brain logical thinking. Feelers make your decisions based on your personal values and how you feel about that choice. So if you're a thinker, your code is T. If you're a feeler, your code is F, F for Freddy or feeler. <laughs> so thinkers are much more cool and analy analytical. You go for logical reasoning and feelers are, um, if you're an empath, you're an obvious feeler. I am not an empath. I am not empathetic at all. I might be sympathetic, but I'm not empathetic. There's a huge difference. And if you're compelled by a constant search for harmony, you'll be a feeler. So you're either, your code is either T for thinker or F for feeler. And number four, what kind of environment makes you the most comfortable? So judges, so this is between judges and perceivers. If you're a judger, you like everything um, quite stable. You, you like uh, predictability. You like structure and order. If you're a perceiver, you like to experience and keep your options open. So, you're, um, so if you're a judger, you're a J code. If you're a perceiver, you're a P code. So judges tend to be much more organized and uh, more productive because they tend to stick to the order they've planned, whereas perceivers tend to go off at a tangent. To say that nicely, they're more flexible, curious, and they're non-conformist. So just based on that, what are you? And this, this quiz that I've just gone into, which is printable, this is in um, fabulous color psychology. Sorry, just had a moment of blankness there. And this was the quiz that was given to me by that manager all those years ago when I worked in 
corporate prison land. And he went through this quiz with everybody in the team. And he said, the thing is, everybody in this team thinks Kim is an extrovert. Because actually, I don't talk a lot in those environments, but I listen. And he said, you all say, oh, Kim's a really good conversationalist. No, she isn't. She hardly says a word. I've got this all written down somewhere. Um, what she does is listens. You think you've just had a great conversation, but what she's doing is listening. She is perceiving how you feel. And she is um, noticing. She is using her intuition to notice uh, how you operate more than how she operates. So I am an INTP, an introvert, intuitive, no, sorry, let me, let me start again. In the workplace, I am an INTP, right? I'm an introvert, intuitive, thinker, perceiver. But actually, essentially at my core, I am an INFP. So in my world where I sit on my own in my introvert world, and I muse and design webinars like this and design courses where it's all about personality and all about the client, stuff the system, put the client first. That's because I am a, um, a feeler. It's based on extenuating circumstances, a constant search for harmony. That's how I decide or come to my conclusions. But in the workplace, I have learned to change that behavior pattern into a thinker where I use my objectivity and my logic, my left brain thinking, that actually that's how I was brought up. So what I'm saying here is I had already learned long before I even knew about this stuff. I had already made, how should we put this, amendments in the way I operated at work from the way I operated in my own life. I knew that in the workplace, if I constantly got distracted by how I felt about something, that would stop me doing my job. And I am motivated by doing a good job. So in the workplace, I changed my perceptions, I changed my behavior rather, from feeler to thinker. Now, let me tell you something really important. I've written it down somewhere and put yellow around it. <laughs> MBTI measures preferences, okay? Not ability. These are preferred ways of behaving. Exactly the same for the color psychology. These are preferred ways of behaving. You do not have to take this, this quiz. You do not have to take the color quiz and then suddenly become a blue yellow for the rest of your life or a ESTP for the rest of your life. What I want to impress upon you is that you can learn what your preferred behavior is and then look at how that works in your business, how that works in your life, in your relationships, with your health. I've had to change some of this with my health, especially this year. This has helped me enormously. It's helped me identify my ideal client. It's helping other people, those who mentor with me, to define their ideal client, to define their ideal business model. 
If you understand how you prefer to operate, but you're also open-minded enough to learn that you can change those behaviors at will, if you take the time and trouble to learn, then you can have success at anything. So I thought I'd give you some examples just to, um, how are we doing for time? Oh, good, goody poos, right. Any questions at this point or are you completely overwhelmed with this? Anna says, you know I'm intrigued by this topic. I know you are. You should be teaching it. So basically, you think that if you are not willing to not willing to change something in your color or psychological profile, either you have someone in your team who can balance your traits, or your business is at risk. I would hesitate to say. I wouldn't go so far as to say your business is at risk, Anna, but I would say you need to look at the traits that you have, the personality elements that you have already, and look how you can supply them, those missing ones, either by somebody else in your team or by changing certain behavior patterns in certain circumstances. So I'm here being a red yellow. I don't do that. That's not me at all. But I'm here being as nice as I can <laughs> under the circumstances. <coughs> and if you knew what had gone on this week, uh, you would uh, you'd get, I'm not going to go over that. But seriously, I am injecting yellow personality traits in here because I know this is what you need as viewers, watchers, listeners. You need me to be um, less than the bossy diva. I, I know I do. Something else I learned as a bossy diva, I mean, if you're a red like me, learn to do this. Do it with humor. Humor is part of my life. I love to laugh. And Mike, the manager who taught me all this stuff, he said, you should let the humor through because that is the saving grace. That, that's what makes the difference. That's who you are. You love a laugh. You tell all these risque jokes. Use it in your business. <sighs> the relief. That's what I'm saying. Use the stuff that you've got. Diane says, love it, Kim. I am an ENFP and really do have to change my F to a T in business. Yes, I do, Diane, because, but I was doing it long before anybody told me I was doing it. And this is what I'd like you to look at. How do you operate in different circumstances? Maybe you're already changing. Maybe, Anna, you're already using different personality traits and you don't realize it. I think this is an opportunity to stop and look at what you're doing. I'm not asking you to suddenly start changing everything. I'm, I think the first stage is, as Diane says, what are you already doing in your business? How are you making, uh, how is your marketing working? So for, um, Neil said this, this, this webinar should be about marketing for your personality type. And I thought that, that is just, that's a course. So I will put together uh, a challenge about that, I think. That, that needs a few days to work on that. But this is how you need to look at this. This is why I wanted to do this as an introduction. What are you doing in your marketing that isn't producing the results? What are you doing in your business that means a client only books with you once? What are you doing on the phone when somebody rings and a client doesn't book with you? What could you change? Is it that you are rigidly sticking to a certain behavior pattern? Could you change that? Could you practice changing that? Anna says, I know what you mean. It took me so much courage to do live online webinars. You see, Anna is a blue, a blue-green. And for a blue, to put yourself out there is, I can't do that. 
but you've done it. You're already doing it, Anna. I'm glad you actually wrote it because I was about to out you <laughs> and say you're already doing it. Sometimes it's the choice. Well, what do I mean sometimes? It's the choice. Do you want a successful business? Do you want to help people? Do you want to change people's lives? What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to change to make that happen? Anna's done it. She's got over this fear of putting herself out there doing live webinars. Diane's done it. She's realized that if she can, like me, in the workplace, if you continue to be a perceive, uh, sorry, um, yes, a, um, what do I mean? An INF, a feeler. If you continue to be a feeler, which means, oh, what does that mean? And how do I feel about it? And how do, you're ignoring the obvious logical approach, which could be beneficial in a business environment. I'm just saying there's an opportunity here to really look at what you're doing. So Anes says, I am an INTJ. I've taken the test several times during the past decade, hoping that one day the E will appear in my indicator. <laughs> oh, Anes. Anes is an empath. You haven't a cat in hell's chance of ever becoming an E. <laughs> You are an empath. You are an interest. She's so ladylike and so perceptive. And uh, I can't imagine myself as a yellow with all my willingness to develop yellow nuances. No, don't do it. Don't do it. We've already discussed this, Anes. Be who you are. You will attract clients because of your blue, green, INTJ profile because when you behave in that way you behave at a vibrational level you send out a frequency and that's what people are attracted to what I was doing when I started my business was I was trying to be I was trying to be I don't know what I was trying to be <laughs> I was trying to be something I'm not I was trying to be formal and uh, business-like and I was trying to be polite and uh, respectful and a lady and these are all things I'm not like that and when Mike showed me that I was pretending at work because everybody thought I was an ENTP which is very different from an INTP he said, you're trying to be sociable and approachable. And he said, stop it. He said, if you don't want to talk to people, tell them to go away. <laughs> and I thought, oh, yes, please. This is why I don't have my phone ringer switched on. I don't answer the phone. I'm at nobody's beck and call. If somebody in the office used to come over for a chat, I would say, could we... Could we make this an appointment? Can I talk to you in half an hour when I finish what I'm doing? It gave me the confidence to be who I am, to be in control, to get my work done in the thinking mode, and then to be available to that person in full feeling mode so that I could listen to their problems because that's what they were talking to me about. They weren't talking to me about work. Nobody came to talk to me. Well, one or two did. But mainly, people came to me because they wanted me to coach them. I've been doing it since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. But what I was doing was I was in feeler mode, which was, oh, right, let's drop everything. Let's get on with what you need. And all the time, as an introvert, I'm thinking, this is really irritating. I don't want to do this in your time frame. I want to do this in a time frame that suits us both. So let's schedule a meeting. Do you see the difference? Oh, it's fabulous, fabulous. 
So let's go back momentarily to conventional wisdom. <laughs> I've been doing some research and there are certain types of MBTI profiles who are known as successful, no, not known as, recommended as the most likely to become successful entrepreneurs. So there are uh, ENTPs, they're the inventors, they love to challenge um, authority. ESTJs, the supervisor, uh, think um, Riker from Star Trek. Uh, there are ISTJs, they're the inspectors. Um, so ENTJs, Steve Jobs. These are the CEOs. Uh, they're the rarest personality type in MBTI. And I think, do I have this somewhere? ENTJ. It, for uh, women, there's only 0.9% ENTJ women. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, the INTJ, the um, INTJ, is that? That's Anes. That's like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. They're the, the masterminds. Now, ENTJs, INTJs, Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, they follow their intuition. The N is their intuition, which means they take risks. If you don't take risks or you're not prepared to take risks, you're probably uh, not an, a, um, a, an, I, a, an N. You are an S. You are a sensor. You have to see it to believe it. But those risks for those people are calculated and assumed. See, all of these types of entre entrepreneurs, they're competitive and they want to win. Do you? Do you want to win? You don't have to want to win. You don't have to be competitive to be successful. But sometimes you need to look at your traits. Okay. So ENTP, ESTJ, ENTJ, INTJ, and ISTJ. Those five personality types are likely to have higher incomes and either be self-employed or manage more people than other personality types. These are behavioral preferences. However, let me point out, Richard Branson is not one of those. He is an ISTP. Uh, Oprah Winfrey is an INFP. Ariana Huffington is an ENFP. So let's not get caught up in what conventional wisdom says. What these people have done, Branson, Oprah Winfrey, Ariana Huffington, is identify their strengths and look at their weaknesses and compensate for what they see as their weaknesses by people working with them or bringing traits in through changing some of their behavior until they could work with a team. So if you do want to be successful, remember MBTI measures preferences, not ability. This is not casting concrete. You can change your behavior at will. So I'll put the, the link to the official MBTI website. Uh, you can take a test there. I think I've got a free test somewhere. I'll have to search that out. But what I've been discovering through all this is, and you might like to make a note of this, four major personality traits that successful entrepreneurs have. 
And I think this is going to be more useful to you in that you can look at your own behavior. You can do the test, the color psychology quiz, MBTI, Enneagrams, um, what else? Kearsy, uh, NLP, whatever. And you can look at whether you have these four major personality traits. I've chosen for, there, there were five and I took the last one out because I wasn't quite sure I agreed with it. I'll muse on it and think later. But these are number one. Successful entrepreneurs are curious. Curious? How is that curious? Knowledge seeking. Finding new ways of doing things. Uh, curiosity is called entrepreneurial alertness. So it's like the current situation. The uh, coronavirus hit and those people who went down the tubes and said, that's the end of my business. They're not curious. They're not looking for another way of working. They've just said, oh, well, that didn't work. Then I better find something else. Curious people always look for a solution to the problem. Uh, these people look for, they, they, look, they, they like to learn. They look for insights. There's always a better way of doing things, an edge. And this is why people who are curious make successful business owners because they know they need to stand out from the crowd by having an edge. Like I've said in my Color Your Client online course, there are thousands of them out there offering online color analysis and it's boring. It's just a boring questionnaire and a, and a, a piece of paper that somebody's prepared first and they just send it to you. It's pre-planned. There's no personalization. To stand out from the crowd, you have to offer something different. And when you offer physical color with color personality, suddenly you have the edge. So if you're seeing that, you're curious. This is a fabulous personality trait to have. Curiosity doesn't make people want to be entrepreneurs, but it makes them good ones. Okay, number two, they're creative. This comes immediately from being curious. If you are resistant, to doing things a certain way just because they've always been done that way, then you're creative. If you can envision an entirely new way of doing something, like taking your business online where you might have been working face to face for the last 9,300 years, and suddenly you think, I can't do that more. Okay, any, anymore. Okay, I could go online, couldn't I? Because everybody's sat at home. Everybody's using Zoom. Everybody's, they can't go out. They can't come and see me. I can't see through a face mask. What else could I do? If you can see there's a new way of presenting your business, you are curious and you're creative. Entrepreneurship is the ability to create and build something from practically nothing. The knack for sensing an opportunity where others see chaos, contradiction, and confusion. I just love that. That's what you could do right now. I'm not saying you have to take your color business and go online. This could be Take your color business and add coaching to it. Take your color business and add personal style and do that online. Take your color business and add color personality or MBTI or um, whatever. What could you sell alongside what you, what you currently do? That's the creativity. 
That's the potential of successful entrepreneurs, that you look at what you've been doing and think, okay, that's not working. What else can I do? Uh, a British study determined that creativity was the single most critical and prevalent trait associated with entrepreneurship. It's so key, in fact, that one study um, on undergraduate students' divergent thinking and creativity, it's a long term, successfully predicted their entrepreneurial intentions. So there are studies going on that are separate from MBTI separate from the colour psychology and all the other things I've been talking about, but looking at whether people have the intention, whether they have the, the flexibility, whether they, they, whether they feel they can change to suit, what did we say, chaos, contradiction and confusion. If you have even the, the slightest idea that you can change, you will be successful. So Elaine says, I think ENFP applies to me. Yep, catch up later, Elaine. Great. ENFP. I will think about that for you. E, definitely. Let me have a wee thinky about that, Elaine. Thanks very much. Great. Okay, so the third trait that we've identified as being a major factor for success is, and I, oh gosh, this changed my entire life. They take responsibility for everything that happens to them. Everything. <coughs> oh dear. Ah, oh, right. When people feel powerless, when times get tough, like now, entrepreneurs look at the situation and know that they have control over the outcome. When you take responsibility for everything that happens to you, you stop whinging and moaning and blaming everybody else for what you think's happened to you. Then you take control of the situation because you know you can change it because you know that you have the power to change what's currently happening <sighs> studies consistently and convincingly find positive correlations between the internal understanding of control, business success, and career satisfaction. If you think somebody else is responsible for what happens to you, you don't take control. If you think the government's the at fault or um, you're the institution, there are political, religious, um, co corporate, there are there's, there's a family institution. There's who you choose to listen to. Who do you choose to listen to? Stop listening to them. Decide for yourself. Take back control. The only way you do that is when you take full responsibility for what happens to you. I was not doing that. I was getting into victim mentality. Oh, I can't cope with this because so and so has let me down or I mean I used to tell the story I tell it now apocryphally whatever the word is after the event <laughs> but uh, my parents made the decision to move house for their future for a better job for a bigger house just as I was about to uh, sit A levels. I was a dead cert to sit the Oxbridge exam. Dead cert. Because yes, I am academically very clever. I use that as an excuse for decades to explain why I wasn't successful. What a load of absolute pigswill. 
Kim. When I learned to take responsibility and realize that wasn't anything to do with anybody else, that was actually my savior. That saved me from a life sitting writing white papers and becoming a professor holed up in a library somewhere, teaching people who do not want to be taught. <laughs> and I would have ended up in jail. It was a life-changing, life-saving decision. But I only saw that later. I used that to blame my parents for years and years and years. And you know where it got me? Down there. Until I worked with a mentor who said, I think we need to talk about this. You keep harping on about it. You keep whinging on about it. It's your responsibility. Take responsibility for everything that happens to you. Yes, miss. <laughs> Anna says, I'd add a third C, consistency. Yes, consistency. This is a hard one for me. It is for me too, Anna. Um, I've, I'm working with uh, somebody at the moment on this very subject to help me with my consistency. Um, so I totally get that. And Diane says, absolutely, Kim, this is great. Thank you. I'm really pleased that you're loving this. I love it. I love it. I could be here all day. And so number four, the major key trait to success is the decisive. Decide what you want to do and just flip and do it. <laughs> Every type has a different method of coming to decisions, all right? Let's remember that. You don't have to come to a decision in the same way as another type. How you come to that decision will then determine how you implement as well. So how you implement your decisions is a preferred way of behavior. You don't just suddenly have to become consistent like Anna's talking about. You don't have to suddenly um, come up with systems. We need, we need systems in our business big time. I've just done a course working on that at the moment. Neil is a blue green. He loves systems. He loves implementing the stuff. Me, I think. <laughs> but I absolutely now see the need for us to have them. And so I have to delve into the behavior patterns that I used to use at work, the thinker, for a start. I'm going nowhere near extrovert on this one, but I can change to an INTP to get these systems implemented. And then I can go back to being an INFP because that is what drives the work I do. But I need to change my behavior to get the job done. You can do that. We can all do that. So another study, this was in the States, found that more on, the more entrepreneurs can be convinced to take different directions, the less likely they are to focus and succeed. So we have to be as potentially successful entrepreneurs, we have to prioritize progress over feelings. So I've had to deliberately commit myself to Neil in a meeting and say, I will do the work that's necessary to enable you to implement the changes that will install those systems that we've needed for the last 17 years. <laughs> One of my mentors fell off her chair <laughs> when I told her I'd done this. She said, my God. she's known me for, like I say, a long time. She said, good grief. <laughs> it's only taken me 17 years. But at least I'm learning that we need these systems because what they will do in the long run is take the pressure off me. I've known that logically. But I have been distracted with my right brain thinking, my feeler uh, and my perceiver that, oh, this is going to really 
cause me a lot of grief. So what I've had to do is shift over to my left brain thinking and, dis and make a decision. The decision is we are implementing new systems. We've got new websites coming up, all sorts of new stuff because of a shift of focus. So these personality traits, let's just go through them again. Be curious, find other ways to do what you want. Yeah, can you do that? Look at what's going on and if it's not working, consider other options, research, learn, find out. Secondly, you're creative. The knack of sensing an opportunity where others see chaos, contradiction and confusion. Don't get drawn into that rubbish. Every cloud has a silver lining, but you have to look for it. That's the curious bit. They're all, can you see all these four are interlinked? You have to be curious first. What else can I do? How can I change that? That's the creative bit. Take responsibility for what's happened. Okay, so you didn't create the coronavirus thing, but you can still take responsibility for how you're going to respond to it. That's the difference. What are you going to do? Go down the tubes? Your choice. That's your behavior. Or you can say, you know, stuff that for a game of soldiers. I am moving onward. And then number four, make decisions and then implement as it's more than just make a decision and this was number five it's it's make a commitment to be decisive to be to take responsibility to be creative to be curious and it doesn't matter what order you do those things in there isn't an order to these I mean, Facebook, for instance, I mean, it's just riddled with this stuff, isn't it? This victim mentality. Um, people whinge and moan and post anything to get attention. God. And then there's all the sycophants who say, oh, you poor dear. I mean, if you're doing that, oh, you poor thing. I'm so sorry for you. Stop it. Because that's what they want. You're feeding their addiction. Let's, let's be positive, can we? Let's... Let's bring our vibration up. Let's make sure that what we're actually doing is what we're doing everywhere. How you do anything is how you do everything. So let's get on with those people that we talked to on, on social media. Perhaps you're, you're promoting yourself on there. Don't get drawn into this whinging and moaning and feeling sorry for people and getting alongside them if you're an empath you will have your own way of doing that it's a behavioral choice create a conversation with them away from what people can see online encourage them to be positive encourage them to work with you because you are curious creative you take responsibility and you're decisive. Let them see those traits. Let them see that by working with you, they will get out of the morass, out of the mire, out of the chaos, the confusion and the contradictions that's going on, especially now. When things go wrong, and they will, they always will. That's the journey of life. Successful people look at the situation and know they have some control over the outcome because they take responsibility for what happens to them. You see, with that attitude, you will always see alternative ways of dealing with the situation, even if it means getting on, on, uh, on social media and asking for help, not whinging and moaning about your situation, but going into a group. I'm a member of uh, two groups in particular where whinging and moaning isn't allowed at all. It's I'm asking for help with this situation. It's very clinical. It's very, I've got this situation. Who could help me? And it might be a paid for situation. It might be a paid for service that I need to look for. I go into those groups because I'm working at a higher level with people who've already made the decision to be 
curious, creative, take responsibility and be decisive. And they do not compromise. There is no room for feeling sorry for yourself. There's room for having uh, friends where you can go and cry on their shoulder. Absolutely. But in the world of business, just think how it looks if you're a business person on Facebook. I mean, I've looked at people. I could give you their names, big names now. When, when they started out, they were whinging and moaning. And I, I made a mental note, never going to work with them. You put yourself on the line in these environments. Um, Leanne says, fantastically fabulous. Thank you. You did put your name, Leanne. Thank you. If you let others control you, are you hearing what I'm saying? You allow who or what to control you. It all happens up here. You take back control when you take back responsibility for everything you think and believe. So my advice is stop pontificating or procrastinating. That's where I spent most of my life. I used to make a joke out of it that I could win gold for England at the procrastination level. I don't do that anymore after I got a good slap around the, 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 the back of the head in June. It's just a lie I've been telling myself for the last 300 years. I thought that was part of my personality type. No, it isn't, Kim. That was a preferred way of behaving that I have perpetuated and created a pattern for, for the last hundred years. I've changed it. I've put that belief down and replaced it with, I can do whatever I put my mind to because there's nothing wrong with me. And there never was. So the purpose of <coughs> understanding your personality type is, as they used to say on University Challenge, this is your starter for 10. That's all it is. It's an indicator of how you currently prefer to behave. I challenge you to look closely at your preferred behavior patterns and then look at what we've been talking about. The key ways to behave to become successful and see where the disparity lies, if any. See where you could make changes. See what you could do to up the ante, to redress the balance, perhaps, to get out of the mire, to become curious creative, take responsibility and be decisive. Because if you've got those four traits and you know when to interject them into your business plan, when to use them when you're marketing, when to use them with clients when you're working with them, you will change your level of success at all parts, in all parts of your life, health, relationships, in your business, in your money, in your abundance, in the way you think. All I can say is that's what it did for me. And I know it will do it for you. <laughs> that's me being my bossy red person again. So you can't be perfect. It's simply not possible. I just think it's arrogant to even try because somebody will think you're not perfect. So why don't you stop faffing about and just flip and do it? Summon up the courage to give it a go. I mean, what have you got to lose? If your immediate answer to that is money, then you need to go back to being curious and creative. There are always ways to make money. Always. Find a way to make the money you need to do what you want or learn how to deal with those limitations, those that, that you can turn around, you might consider them limitations now. You have the option to change the way you behave. So from the training I took recently, I realized that if I simply turn on my INTP for a short space of time, 
and use my red yellow a bit more than usual. I can organize an action plan and carry it out strategically. It feels good for the first time ever because I've made a decision to take responsibility for it. I've made a decision to take responsibility for it. So can you. Let me just see um, what the comments or questions are. Diane says, I agree, Kim. We keep ourselves stuck in our stories. Oh, I've done it for as long as I've been on the planet, Diane. I mean, about time. I had to ha get it square in the face from somebody who had the guts to tell me. Another red, surely not. <laughs> but she was very direct and said, you've been telling this story all your life. It's time to stop it. And Suzanne says, that's great, Kim. You've brought together a lot of what I knew and have learned from in the past. I really liked your style, taking responsibility now and going to get lunch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> absolutely. That's absolutely fabulous. Well, I hope that I've encouraged you to look at who you're being right now, to look at who you'd rather be based on the fact that I think you turned up here because you want to learn how to be successful. It's not difficult. It's not rocket science. It's applying your innate gifts and talents with your learned skills and then deciding how to use them, deciding what your behavior will be by being curious, creative, taking responsibility, and making decisions and then implementing them. If you want to know more, there's loads of training courses that I've done. Uh, this stuff permeates everything I do. You have to understand your client to be able to help her get what she wants, but you have to understand yourself first. Go and find out who you are. Do the color psychology quiz. Take the MBTI quiz. Study fabulous color psychology. Take the ultimate training course. Do the color, psychology, uh, the color analysis in a box. Take color confidence expert. Whatever it is that you need, just go and do it and get out there and create the business of your dreams. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going for a large gin and tonic.